Hi, welcome to a new video. Today we want to look at the posterior distribution or the Bernoulli distribution. I will first give some intuition, then we will do the derivation, and in the end we will look at an example with tensorflow probability and some graphs. So recall the Bernoulli distribution was a discrete distribution for a random variable that can either take two states. And for example, think about the weather, which can either be good or bad, and then we can encode this as zero or one. And now our task is that we have some data, but we don't have theta since the weather was like distributed with a Bernoulli with the parameter theta, and we don't know this parameter, so we want to infer it. And earlier we looked at the maximum likelihood estimate and the maximum a posteriori estimate. And both of them are point estimates, so they give us one particular theta value. But maybe we are interested in some sort of an uncertainty quantification, so we want to know how sure we are about the theta value that we choose. So we maybe want to have a distribution of p of theta. So actually what we're looking for is a distribution p of theta given our data. So we want to know how likely theta is given the data that we observed. And for this, we are looking at the following graphical model, which consists of an theta, which we now assume to be a random variable, and it consists of observations. So they are shaded and they are wi, so observing the weather at certain points or certain days. And the observations are caused by our latent theta. And we have n observations. So essentially, this is our data set. And the theta is modeled as a beta distribution and therefore takes two hyperparameters, which is the alpha and which is a beta. So let's put this down. So we say theta, uh, theta is distributed according to a beta distribution with an alpha parameter and a beta parameter. And we say wi, or the ith weather sample, is distributed according to a Bernoulli with this theta. So with the distributed theta. Let us denote or write down the joint distribution. So the joint is the P of theta and, well, let's call it a data set. You could also just call it the WIs or the W vector for certain number of WIs, but we will call it the D for the data set. And according to the rules of factorization and directed graphical models, this is nothing else as P of theta, so our prior distribution, times P of D given theta, and this is our likelihood. So let's write this down. So this is the prior and this is the likelihood. And we can also make this more explicit by writing down what is the distribution of the prior itself. So the beta distribution is giving us one over the beta function of alpha and beta times theta to the alpha minus one times one minus theta to the beta minus one, and the likelihood is the product from zero to n minus one over our data set, so over theta to the ith observation times one minus theta to one minus the ith observation. Okay. Now let's go back. So this is our like prerequisite that we have the graphical model, but we want um, the posterior. So we want the theta given D. And let's write this down. So we have the P of theta given D. And in order to get this, kind of have to yeah, invert the arrows in a sense. And this calls for Bayes rule. So we have to write it the other way around. Therefore, we have in the numerator p of d given theta, or p of the data set given theta, times p of theta, divided by p of the data set. And we see the top, or like the um, 
like the numerator is nothing else as our joint distribution. So this is P of theta and D and we divide it by P of D. And usually the problem here is that P of D is difficult. So um, it is difficult to assess the likelihood of our data set itself. So we commonly work in the, like with the proportional, which is usually sufficient for our tasks. And so we see that P of theta given D is proportional to P of theta and D. And this is also some interesting observation that you will find more often also that the conditional is proportional to the joint. So the conditional is proportional to the joint. Okay, now just plug in what we have. So we found that the conditional is proportional to the joint. So we can just write down the conditional and take what we had up here. So I will also be lazy and just copy what we wrote down for our joint and go down here, put it in. And then we see, well, we can go even one step further since one over beta is just also a scaling factor. So we also kick it out in a sense in by taking the proportional, so it's just a constant. And we have theta to the alpha minus one. And now before we go on and write this down, let's look, if, look a little bit closer at what we have here on the right. So we have the product um, over all our samples. But we can, of course, also split up the product. So we have the product over the Bernoulli, but we can also take the product over its factors. So we would then have our theta to the alpha minus one times the product from I zero to N minus one over theta to the WI times then one minus theta to the beta minus one times and here we would then have the product over one minus theta to the one minus wi. Okay, now let's look at some um, rules of um, expon exponentials. And for this, take, us an, take an example here. So for instance, let's say we had five data points and they would be theta to the zero times theta to the one, for instance, times theta to the zero, times theta to the one, times theta to the one. Well, what would probably be the solution to this, or if you apply rules of uh, exponent exponentials, then you would have theta to the power of three. So essentially, if we take the product of um, exponentials, then we add up the, the basis the same, then we add up the exponents. And that is what we get here. So we have a theta to the alpha minus one times a theta to the sum from i zero to n minus one over wi times one minus theta to the beta minus one times, and here we have one minus theta to the one minus, sorry, not, but the sum from i zero to n minus one over one minus wi. Okay, this also holds for just two factors, of course, so we can also put this together. So we have a theta to the alpha minus, make like this alpha plus the sum from i zero to n minus one over wi minus one times one minus theta to the beta. And let's look at this. So we can um, put make this into two sums and summation from i zero to n minus one over one is just n, so we have plus n, and then we keep minus the sum from i zero to n minus one over w i, and then of course the minus one. Okay, this is already our posterior um, because we did something that is really common in probability theory that we made some proportionals, then did some um, derivations and then ended up with something where we then have to identify another distribution. And this seems a little bit hard and tricky at first if you're not familiar with too many distributions, but um, here we can find a distribution indeed. 
And for this, let me help you with um, defining something. Let me define an alpha prime and let this be alpha plus the sum from i0 to n minus 1 over wi. And we define a beta prime, which is beta plus n minus the sum from i0 to n minus 1 over wi. And if we plug this in, then we get this is theta to the alpha prime minus 1 times 1 minus theta in brackets to the beta prime minus 1. And now this must ring a bell because this is actually just a beta distribution. Remember, the beta distribution contained those factors and it had an, like a proportionality constant. So essentially what this is, this is proportional to a beta distribution, but with the parameter alpha prime and beta prime. And what we just discovered is, so we said, uh, we just discovered that uh, the, the, the posterior of the, of the theta parameter is essentially a beta distribution. So this is our P of theta given the data. And that's something remarkable because actually we found something that appears quite often in probability theory that you have something that is called a conjugate prior. In our case, our prior was the beta and our model was the Bernoulli. And if we put this together, then our posterior is a beta once again. Okay, I'm now in a terminal and on the right hand side I have an interactive beta chart plotter. And to, in order to get started I will open up a Python session, then I will import a package in order to suppress TensorFlow warnings. Then we need TensorFlow itself. And we need TensorFlow probability. Then we can define a true model. So this is where we create our data from, but which we actually would not know in real life because we would observe the weather. And this is a Bernoulli distribution with a probability of, let's say, 70%. And then we can create a data set where we sample the weather 10 times and here, for example, we observed good weather, good weather, bad weather, good weather, and so on. Now we have to encode our prior knowledge. So we have to define the alphas and the betas of our, um, of, our, yeah, of our prior. And for this, we will model a beta distribution that kind of fits our expert knowledge. So let's say, for instance, maybe go here, the beta to a 1.5 and the alpha to a well, maybe, maybe a two, something like this. So we think the probability mass, or it's more likely for the feeder parameter to be um, yeah, in, in this range, but we're not too, too certain about it. So there's still some, some um, uncertainty. Otherwise we could make these values higher. So our alpha is 2.0 and our beta is 1.5. Then we can define our alpha primes according to what we found for our, for our posterior distribution. And alpha prime was an alpha plus. And now we have to reduce our data set. So we have to we have to take the sum of the data set. So it's tf dot reduce sum. But we have to cast it first since alpha is a floating point value and our observations are integers. And so we take our data set and cast it to a float. And we do a similar thing for the beta prime which is beta plus, and we have 10 observations. Uh, this is our n minus, and here we have the same reduction. And we have to cast again into a float. Okay, let's look at alpha prime. Alpha prime is an eight, and beta prime is a 5.5. Okay, let's plot it like this. Put the alpha to an eight and the beta to a 5.5. And what we can immediately observe 
that our observation or like our distribution has become narrower. And we see that, well, its peak is around 0.6 or 0.62, something like this. Um, but our knowledge or our information is more certain um, since we've drawn some samples or we observed some weather. And if we observe more and more weather, then we might get closer to something that is just a peak at 0.7, which was our original probability.